I'm sorry. Uh, there seems to be some sort of uh, misunderstanding. I'm looking for Ray Vecchio. Eh? Uh, Raymond Vecchio, the detective. You talked to Welch, right? Uh, yes, I did. Good. So we're on the right track. Look, I'm glad you're back, Fraser, because things have not been the same around here. Obviously. And you want to know why? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. Traditionally, what you would do is have one or two or three shows where you phase the old person out and you bring in the new person. I thought, well, we could just use that as backstory that, for, that would form an episode later on, and we'll just start it off and it'll be odd. It would set a, a tone right away. I've been trying to get to you to talk to you about this. Uh, there's an operation going on. This operation comes from way up the ladder. Details are kind of sketchy, but all we need to know is Ray Vecchio has gone deep undercover with the mob. Now, to protect his identity, we have to make believe that this guy is Ray Vecchio. I see. Seeing that I had agreed to the show, then it had to be a good idea. Um, not knowing, because it's very hard, how do you replace somebody and how do you, um, somebody who has a following or somebody who, you know, that, that you know, look, I, I, you know, I wasn't in a position to ask too many questions or go how, because they would have probably had to write episodes of what happened to that other character because they didn't resolve it by the end of the season before. Kind of thinking about it, though, sort of weirdly daring now. <laughs> Not sure if I'd do it again, but it was it was funny. It did create a different dynamic, and I thought the dynamic that was created the second time around, and the way all the characters really started to come together and blossom. They started to give, uh, spread it out more. You know, I mean, the first year, especially, uh, and the second year. Paul and David were working like, especially Paul, 16 hours a day because they were the whole show. And uh, they were really, really working, and we weren't. It was a lot more interesting to me because it was more of an ensemble um, feel to it and energy, you know? And so I really appreciated that as an actor and a viewer. Detective Division. It's them! It's them! Get them on speaker! Where are you guys? Sink something. What sink? Uh, kitchen sink, perhaps. Where is your sink? Sink, sink. We're sinking. Give them the coordinates, right? I think we're roughly 47 degrees latitude. 47 degrees latitude. 85 degrees long. 85 degrees long. Write that down. In the episode, Mounty on the Bounty, that all started because we were shooting another episode of Juice Cells down by the lakeshore here in Toronto. The funny thing about that show, though, was that in my mind, I'd had two lake boats. These freighters are about 820 feet long. And they're just solid steel. And I thought, well, we'd just have a good boat and a, and a bad boat, and they'd get together, and there'd be this you know, boat-to-boat -boat fight. <clears throat> so we got all of the lake boat guys in, and they were all sitting around. And they're tough, and they've got you know, their belt buckles all face the ground, and they're very big, muscly with you know, tattoos and everything. And this guy said, you can't put two boats together. I said, why not? Because if they smash into each other, they'll break and they'll sink. So we can't get two boats together? No. Yeah, unless you could hold one of them in place with tugs. I'll get these tugboats out. Said, okay, how many tugboats will we need? 28. All right, well, we'll get 28 tugboats. There are only three in Lake Ontario. Oh, okay. So then we were screwed because we couldn't do the two boat thing. And the whole climax with the two boats coming together. And we happened to be shooting an episode. We were down, on the, down along the lakefront. And I l just glanced over, and, and behind this building were three uh, masts standing up with rigging on them. I think I might have something that fits the bill. Domestic. And as he's looking at it, here comes the bounty ship, the real bounty ship from the 1960 Marlon Brando movie, the exact replica of the original one. I was just sitting there <laughs> with all these white sails, and I thought, oh my god, that would be beautiful. I have all these red mounties and these white sails on a wo little wooden boat out in the water. And so we ran up onto the boat, and I said, how do we, uh, can we just use this? Sure, and it was an, it's a non-for-profit boat that circumnavigated the globe like seven times, and 
So we went and spent a week and a half or something floating around on this boat. It was absolutely delirious. I remember Paul saying to me at one point, because he was then executive producer and I was creative producer, and I remember him saying to me, how do we get this budget approved? How do we, what do we do? And I, I remember saying to him, usually, Paul, what happens is that you and me and Frank would have to go and talk to the suits and convince them that we should do this. Now, we're the suits. <laughs> because we were suddenly in the role of the guys who had to decide. I said, oh, well, that's easy. Let's do it. <laughs> and that was it. Because how do you justify a wooden boat? I mean, Bob Carney, who was a co-executive producer, said, uh, what, what do you mean a wooden boat? How do we have a wooden boat? What, who, who, who would have a wooden boat? And I said, well, there's some crazy Mountie guy off in the woods somewhere has decided that we should be a naval power. We could have a wooden boat. He said, that's ridiculous. Yes, but you, know, you could just write it that way, couldn't you? So we did. We had this renegade <laughs> Mountie supposed to be training them off in the woods in, I don't know, survival techniques or something, has them actually building a big wooden boat. She had a long-standing dispute with headquarters regarding the future of the force. Her position was that we should revamp and develop ourselves into a fully-fledged naval power. A naval power? Mm. Well, why not? What's the point of having a strong federal force without a strong naval power? I don't think that we need to get into that right now, Sergeant. <laughs> you know what's over there? No. The United States of America. That would be a foreign power. A damn big one, too. We have a special relationship with the United States, Sergeant. Oh, no, sure. England and Spain get along now. But don't forget about the Spanish Armada. Think about it. If Nelson hadn't been ready, we'd all be speaking Spanish, and I have no love for Romance languages. Are you an American? Oh, that was great. Uh, spend most of the day floating around the harbor on that wooden ship and then shooting off cannons. And... Yeah, that was, that was a great, great episode. You gonna take the transfer? I don't think so. You? Me? No. All right, so we're, we're still, uh, I think. OK, good. <laughs> <laughs>